Hello everyone, in the previous video, we talked about the difference between domain and range. So to kind of go along with that, we want to talk about the difference between a discrete domain and a continuous domain. So we'll start with discrete. Discrete domain is just a set of input values that consists only of certain numbers as an interval. So our example here would just be the integers six to 10. So integers, we just have six, seven, eight, nine, 10, no decimals or fractions in between those whole numbers. So on a graph, we just represent them as single points. Okay, we don't shade in between or anything like that. For continuous domain, we have a set of input values that consists of all numbers in an interval. So we're still using numbers six to 10, but it's all numbers six to 10. So notice here we have a dot at six, a dot at 10, uh, but we've shaded in between there because we do include those values that are between the whole numbers. So we're gonna look at two examples. Um, of word problems where they ask us to find the domain and then tell if the domain is discrete or continuous and then we'll also draw a graph of the function. So example one says the linear function m equals 40 minus 7d represents the amount m in dollars of money you have after buying d DVDs. So two things they want us to do, kind of three, find the domain of the function, tell if the domain is discrete or continuous, and then graph the function. So the domain, remember domain is like our input value, which is like our independent variable, which is going to be the variable that is not solved for, right? So in this case, this equation is solved for M, right? So M would be our output value or our dependent variable. So when we're talking about domain, we wanna think, or we wanna focus on D, the variable D, okay? So D represents the number of DVDs we could buy. Well, we could buy zero DVDs, right? So I'm gonna write these as coordinate points first. We could buy zero DVDs. How much money will we have left? We'll still have $40. We could buy one DVD. That will cost us $7. So we will have $33 remaining. We could buy two DVDs, which would cost us $14, which means we have $26 remaining. We could buy three DVDs, um, which would mean we're spending $21, which means we have $19 remaining. We could buy four DVDs, $28, so we have $12 remaining. We still have enough to buy a fifth DVD, and we would have $5 remaining. But at this point, we cannot buy another DVD because we don't have um, $7 remaining. We only have $5 remaining. And we can't buy half a DVD, right? We can't buy a fraction of a DVD, so we have to stop there. So our domain would just be our input values, right? So 0, 1, 2 three, four, five, that would be our domain, okay? So our range would be the, the Y values there, okay? So they tell us, is the domain discrete or continuous? Well, we said we can't buy half a DVD. We can't buy fractional pieces of a DVD. So we're not going to include all numbers between zero and five, just zero, one, two, three, four, five. So we will call this discrete. So we're gonna graph the function just with points. And we're not gonna draw a line between the points, just points themselves. So we'll start with zero and 40. So that's if we bought, if we didn't buy any DVDs, we still have $40 left. If we buy one, we're gonna have about 33. So I estimate on my graph here. Two, we'll have about $26. Three, we'd have about $19 remaining. Four, about $12. And five, we've got about $5 remaining. And that's all we would do. We would not connect to those points because we, we can't buy half of a DVD, right? So we only use uh, points there and that represents a discrete domain. Okay, so let's look at example two. Example two tells us that we have a 40 gallon water tank and it's draining at a rate of five gallons per minute. The number G of gallons remaining is a function of the number M of minutes. So part A says, is this situation linear? Well, to answer that question, we need to think about the rate at which this tank is draining. So it tells us it's five gallons per minute, right? So we could say for part A, right, as M, as our minutes increase by one, so as M increases by one, G, which is our gallons remaining, decreases by five, right? So five gallons per minute. So yes, that's constant. And so we would say, yes, that is linear, okay? So now let's talk about the domain here. Well, domain, um, once again, is going to be our input, which is gonna be our um, minutes in this case. Well, before we 
start draining this tub, that's minute zero, we have 40 gallons in the tank, right? So we could say that would be like zero comma 40. Okay. All right, um, after, after one minute, we're down to 35 gallons. Two minutes, we're at 30. Three minutes, we're at 25. Fix that a little bit. Three minutes, we're at 25. Four minutes, we've got 20 gallons. Five minutes, we're at 15. Six minutes, we're at 10 gallons. Seven minutes, we have five gallons left. And then finally, after eight minutes, our tank is empty. Okay, so now, right now, it looks like a discrete domain. But let's ask ourselves, is the tank only draining on the minute? Right, so we start, you know, we, we pull the plug, but no water comes out until exactly one minute. Is that how it's gonna work? No, that's not how it's gonna work. As soon as we pull that plug out, water's gonna come out, right? It's gonna come out in values that are in between zero and one minute, right? One second. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a straight line and we're gonna connect these points here, right? Because this is continuous domain. Right, this water, you know, we can think of it, it's continuously draining, not only on the whole minute values, uh, but it's continuously draining from minute zero all the way to minute eight. So how would we express this? We wouldn't write the domain as just zero, one, two, three, all the way to eight, because we, we need those values in between there. And it wouldn't be practical to write every single number in between there, because we know we have a lot of different decimals. So we're gonna write it as an inequality, right? We start at minute zero, we're gonna put our, our variable M in the middle, and it takes us eight minutes to drain the entire tank. So now we're gonna put our inequality symbols of less than or equal to. So what that means is that minutes, it takes greater than or equal to zero minutes, but less than or equal to eight minutes. So in other words, from minute zero to minute eight is how long it takes. That's our domain, right? That's how many minutes it takes for us to empty this tank. Okay, so I hope that gives you a better idea um, between the difference of discrete and continuous domains.